Well, the Golden State Warriors defeated the Sacramento Kings 127 to 123 last night, and it was the second consecutive game for the Warriors that uh, went down to the wire, so to speak, and was considered, uh, I guess, one of the better games of the regular season. Um, Buddy Hield uh, had 32 points for the Sacramento Kings, and um, the Kings set a franchise record with 20 made three-pointers last night. They were 20 of 36 from beyond the arc. And um, normally in a game like that, you know, you think the Kings would have blown out the Warriors, but Stephen Curry caught fire. Now, in comparison, the Warriors were only, well, I don't say only, because that's still a great percentage. The Warriors were 21 of 47 from beyond the arc. But Steph Curry hit 10 three-pointers last night. He was 10 of 20 from beyond the arc. Um, and he scored 42 points, including 20, 20 in the fourth quarter. And uh, it's when Curry has these burst games like this, it's when the Warriors become a different type team. Um, ordinarily in games where they might it might be a tight performance, or if the Warriors are down by 15, he, and to a slightly lesser extent, Clay Thompson, can just bust a game wide open. And uh, with this performance tonight, uh, Curry moved past Kyle Corver on the all-time three-pointers list, three-pointers made list. And he now is only behind Ray Allen, who's at 2,973, Reggie Miller, who's at 2,560, and Jason Terry, who's at 2,282. And with Curry sitting at 2,277, he's going to pass Jason Terry unless he get hit by a bus. He's going to pass Jason Terry within the next game or two, most likely. Um... One thing that bothers me a little bit about the media, though, is when they anoint Curry with the title the greatest shooter of all time. I think that's a little bit disrespectful. Um, and I think what they should say is that he's the greatest. And Larry Bird said something about this recently, and I agree with Bird 100%. They should, I would call him the greatest three-point shooter or the greatest deep shooter or the most prolific three-point shooter. Those are more accurate titles, but to call him the greatest shooter of all time is very disrespectful to other great shooters of all, you know, in past eras. And when I, when I say this to people, I notice in particular, I talk to young fans, they don't, they, they, you know, they don't seem to understand what the fuck I'm saying. Like, well, what you call only made 903? Do you hear what the fuck I'm saying, you dumb fuck? I'm not talking about just three points, three pointers. I'm talking about scoring in the paint. I'm talking about the mid range. I'm talking about being able to create your own shot. I'm talking about shooting over guys, creating space, accuracy, making hard shots. I'm talking about overall. I don't think he's the greatest shooter I've ever seen. He's one of the greatest shooters, he, you know, he, and by the numbers, he's the most prolific three-point shooter of all time and the greatest three-point shooter of all time. He might not have the highest percentage as, as say, Steve Kerr, but <laughs> Kerr basically was a spot-up shooter. You know what I'm saying? Like, and he only made 700, I think, 26 three-pointers in his career. Stephen Curry has, what... Off the top of my head, three times as many three pointers as, as Steve Kerr, and the degree of difficulty that, of shots that he makes from outside. Yeah, he's a great three point shooter. But what about guys like Draws and Petrovic? What about guys like you know even Reggie, Reggie Miller? What about Chris Mullen, Larry Bird? I think you know he's up there. Glenn Rice. 
there are other guys in the conversation as far as greatest overall shooter. Statistically, Steve Nash has a case, even though he didn't shoot the ball as much. But this, Steve Nash is a guy who's what a six three guard, probably more like six two, barefoot, who shot forty nine percent from the floor for his career, forty three percent from beyond the arc, and second all time in free throw percentage. Right now, he's only marginally behind. Uh, Stephen Curry, fractionally behind in free throw percentage. There's other other contestants out there, man. There's other guys that are great pure shooters. Dell Ellis thought that he was the best shooter in the game. Mahmoud Durouf, Mark Price, for his era, probably the best mid range shooter in the 1970s. The two best mid-range shooters are probably Rick Barry and uh, Calvin Murphy. Then you have other guys that come to mind. They weren't great, great outside shooters, but overall, Ricky Pierce, Jeff Malone, masters of the mid-range. You know, so it's like, I just think it's disrespectful just to sit there and say that Stephen Curry is the greatest shooter ever. How about just saying he's the best shooter of his generation? You know? It's, 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 it's just disrespectful how a lot of these guys are coming out their mouths lately, man. And, well, you know what? Curry doesn't even say that. It's the media with that one. You know, Curry's too classy to sit there and say, I'm the best shooter ever. Even if he thinks that, he doesn't say it. Unlike the asshole in Los Angeles who's surrounded by sycophants. And, you know, basically he doesn't get checked by some of the shit he's been saying lately. You know, I can say and do what I want. I'm a staple in this game. I can do whatever. Now I'm the GOAT. I always notice, like, in interviews, man, with LeBron James, his favorite topic is himself. I never really hear him expouse on different things or talk about, um, Topics that exclude him, like the most frequently used word in his interviews when I look at transcripts are I. But hey, when you nickname the king, you kind of can expect that. But um, this was a good win for the Golden State Warriors. Um, they haven't been looking as dominant as in years past. Um, hopefully this can, well, I can't say that because they've gotten some good wins. And then they've laid some eggs. But the regular season is the regular season with the Warriors. And they're probably just looking, at this point in time, they're just looking forward to the postseason. Um, a friend of mine made this good point, man. Uh, a lot of people talking about, you know, why the Warriors don't look as good. Well, you know, this year, as far as wins are concerned, well, even with the year that they won the title the first time uh, in 2015, People forget they won 67 games that year, which is one of the highest totals of all time still. And then the next year, they act actively did go off for that record, and they won 73 games. All right, but what was the end result of that? They won 73 games in the regular season, and ultimately they came up short. So what's the point of going all out in the regular season, you know, and then all of a sudden, deep in the playoffs, you guys lose a game. Uh, so, I mean, home court advantage does matter. But setting records during the regular season, what does that translate to in the postseason? You know, I still don't uh, whatever. But I think the Warriors would be all right, man. Stephen Curry is one of the greatest shooters uh, that I've ever seen, uh, the, gr the greatest three-point shooter I've ever seen. Uh, I used to say it was maybe Glenn Rice, but uh, Glenn, I I've never seen Glenn sh shoot consistently like Steph Curry. Um, some of the most difficult shots that he makes, and even some of the ones that he just barely misses, it's incredible, man. And um, Stephen Curry, one of the best 
shooters slash scorers that I've ever seen. And, uh, and this might be controversial to say, but he's definitely a better player than Reggie Miller, in my opinion. Uh, but tell me what you guys think about the game and Stephen Curry and the arguments that they're making.